at one point he got so upset that he threw up. Susie Geyser linked sleep training to taming a wild stallion, but pediatric sleep consultant Katie Kovaleski is a baby whisperer. So the golden rule is drowsy but awake. She says don't wait until your child falls asleep and then tiptoe out of the room. You want them to learn to fall asleep on their own. To do that, focus on these elements. First, a consistent bedtime routine. So the same activities in the same order each day and each night are really helpful in getting your child to sleep and cueing them and cueing their bodies that it's time to relax and go to bed. Also, make their environment comfortable. The bedroom should be a dark room with white noise at 73 degrees or cooler. And consider stopping nighttime feedings when they're four months or older. Could your feeding actually be hindering the child from falling asleep? This is especially important for babies who have reflux, any kind of food allergies, that kind of thing. Above all, find the right sleep training method for you. Geyser chose the check and console method, which encourages parents not to check every time the child cries. So the first night, I had the monitor, and I had a glass of wine, and I had the monitor with the volume turned down, and I just sat there and like watched him cry. It wasn't easy, but by day four, her son Grayson was sleeping, well, like a baby. But Kovaleski says whether your method is more attachment parenting or co-sleeping. You have to be consistent every single day um, to make it come together. In this case, happy baby makes happy parents. I'm Marty Salt reporting.